Hey guys, in today's episode, we're gonna break down how to do market research for a microgreens business the easy and most effective way. This information can really be applied to any physical product business, whether you're growing and selling microgreens or selling any physical products such as water bottles or jewelry, etc. But today we're gonna to focus on microgreens businesses. This is a super valuable episode for those just starting a microgreens business, but also for those that have been running one for years. Trends, market expectations, popularity of products, and so much more can change in just a few years. As an example, wheatgrass and alfalfa spreads used to be the most well-known superfoods a decade ago. Now, broccoli microgreens, sunflower shoots, and cilantro microgreens have taken the spotlight. I see businesses that had a great product offering a decade ago not adapt to current trends, growing techniques, packaging, etc. And this can easily be avoided and used to your advantage by doing proper market research, which we'll dive into in today's episode. Let's get right into it. When starting or expanding a microgreens business, it's really important to spend the time to do proper market research. Sometimes people want to start a business guns blazing and try everything and just see what sticks. And this is a valid approach to business, but it is a lot slower and more costly. I want to show you the easy way to ensure you start your business on the right grounding and continue to keep up with the ever-changing environment your business is operating in. There are four main ways I've found to do proper market research. These include using Google Trends, searching for competition on Google, scoping out what's available locally, and working backwards from distributors. There are definitely more ways than this to do market research, but to keep things simple and what I've seen work, we'll stick to these four. So first we have Google Trends. This is an easy one to start with as you can literally do it right after watching this video. It's available 24 seven and helps you see what the trends are on a macro level. So if you search microgreens and see that the trend has been moving upwards over the last decade, and from when I started my farm in 2013 to today, the interest has grown from six out of 100 to 71 out of 100. That's over a thousand percent increase in interest over the last decade. For anyone who doubts the potential on microgreens or thinks it's a fad, I think the numbers speak for themselves. I expect this trend to continue for many, many years to come. For micro focus data, we'll get into more details in the third way to do market research, scoping out what's available locally. So overall, Google Trends is a great, easy, and quick way to see if the market for your business is growing, declining, or staying flat. Generally speaking, a growing market is where you wanna be. It makes starting and building a business that much easier. When the pie is growing, it's easier to get a chunk than when the pie is shrinking. Now, Google Trends lets you search more regionally by country or by state, but in my experience, the more localized the search, the less accurate the data. For example, if I search Florida as the region for the search term microgreens, then the trend is still upwards, but there's some data skewing the results. Then if you go even more regional and choose Miami, Fort Lauderdale, you can see that the data gets even more skewed with sharp peaks and troughs in interest. So definitely use Google Trends for the macro trends, but not the micro trends or localized areas as it's just not accurate enough. Next, we have searching your competition on Google. This is another easy way to do market research that is quick, easy, and can be done anytime. If I wanna see what the landscape looks like for microgreens in Toronto, I would search microgreens Toronto and see what farms pop up. The most important items you wanna look for are what products they sell and if possible, the price they sell them at. You can't really see the quality of the product by their website, so it's not really a great way to compare quality of products, but rather the more quantitative side, which is the numbers such as price and which products they carry. To make this process easier, you can use the accompanying market research document that you can download for free on our website at microgreensconsulting.com. You'll wanna add in the info about each competitor and keep this document handy when choosing the products and pricing you want for your business. So each farm has their own pricing, unit sizes, and product lineup. Generally, you'll have a lower end price competitor, a higher end price competitor, and a bunch in the middle. If you live in a smaller town or city, you may find a few different farms selling microgreens in your local area. Now with this information, it does not give you the full picture of the size of the farm, how popular the product is, and the quality of the product. It just gives you the price, the unit size, and the product lineup. The next way to do market research is scoping out what's available locally. This is a step where you'll have to actually go out and see what you can find in your region. I recommend starting with health food stores in your area as they almost always carry microgreens. So you'll go to the stores and I recommend taking pictures of the products, the labels, pricing, and putting them in the market research document. You may find some of the products you found online in the last section in these stores and now you can take in a visual assessment of the product quality. Generally speaking, microgreens with larger leaves and shorter stems are considered higher quality, and microgreens with smaller leaves and longer stems are considered lower quality. 
you'll generally find that the higher price point microgreens have these qualities as experienced growers learn from their customers over time. As an example, most chefs are quite picky about product quality. They're unlikely to buy microgreens that look more like soup noodles than microgreens. So when you bring a low quality microgreen to chefs, they are very unlikely to use the product at the restaurant. But this feedback is a good thing and helps direct you to where you need to improve your product and or your business. If you want to completely skip this step on figuring out how to grow the highest quality microgreens, I break it down in our Microgreens Mastery Grow Guide for free that you can also download at microgreensconsulting.com. Now, while I don't necessarily recommend doing this step I'm about to talk about at this stage of the market research process, you'll definitely want to go back to these stores and have an honest and open conversation with the produce manager or store manager. If it's a really small store, they may not have a produce manager, so you would talk to the store manager. You'll want to explain that you're considering starting a microgreens business or that you already run one and would love to sell this store in the future. You can ask questions like which microgreen products are most popular with your customers? How long do you find the shelf life lasts in store? Are there any microgreens that customers are asking for that you don't carry? Even questions like, would you mind sharing the price you purchase the microgreens at as I want to be competitive and sure I can provide value for your customers? Your goal at this stage is to gain as much information as possible. This information is very powerful in helping you make sound and accurate decisions for your business. For example, if the produce manager says the shelf life is only six or seven days on what they currently carry and they're throwing out a lot of product, bingo. This is where you can find your competitive edge with, with a longer lasting product. Or if the produce manager says that a lot of customers are saying the price is just too high, bingo. This is potentially where you can find your unique offering by offering at a lower price. Add these notes to your market research document and when you see multiple stores or potential customers having the same issues, then you know that is definitely where you should try to find your competitive advantage. This is really powerful stuff and a lot of businesses and farms simply don't do this. They start growing microgreens and trying to sell them hoping it will work. You are in a growing market so the strategy can work but if you want to start and expand a business rapidly, picking the right crops, the right price point, and the right competitive advantages will supercharge your growth with ease. Lastly, we have the strategy of working backwards with distributors. This is kind of like detective work where you want to gain information to solve a puzzle. And that puzzle is what is the price point that restaurants are paying for microgreens? A lot of restaurants are busy and decide to purchase their microgreens from large distributors like US Foods or Cisco. And honestly, it's just easier for them. But the product quality is often pretty low as they can be shipped from far away and rot before the chefs can use all the product. So your competitive advantage can be quality and or shelf life. Price points are a lot harder to find for restaurants than retail stores where the price is just listed in the store. So you can pretty much call any distributor and ask for a price list. You can say that you're potentially opening up a restaurant and you're looking for some prices for microgreens. And while you got them on the phone, you can ask them some questions as well. Like what microgreen varieties do you sell most of? Do you find that product goes bad quickly? What's the general shelf life? Which farms do you purchase microgreens from? Again, you wanna to try to gain as much information as you can. This time to sell to restaurants instead of retail stores and find your competitive advantage and niche in that market. And who knows, maybe one day you'll actually sell to these distributors and have the next upcoming microgreens farm call to see what your price products are at that distributor. This is powerful, powerful information that can really make a big difference in the success of your farm. I wish I knew this when I started my farm as it would have saved me a ton of trial and error and guesswork to figure out what to grow, what to price that, and how to find my competitive edge. I hope this helps you on your microgreen journey. What you heard today was just a snippet of what is offered in the Start a Microgreens Business from Scratch course. I walk you through step by step on how to start a microgreens business from your home the easy way. If you're interested in a detailed guide on absolutely everything you need to know, including a pre-built website, software to help manage growing the microgreens, and so much more, you can watch a free webinar at jonah.freedomfarmers.com. The link for the Freedom Farmers webinar is also in the description. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to the Microgreens Mastery Podcast. To access a wealth of insights, just click the subscribe button, stay notified about each new episode, and enjoy all of this wisdom for free. If you're ready to supercharge your Microgreens business, visit microgreensconsulting.com for a gold mine of guides and resources. We've transformed thousands of Microgreens businesses, and you're invited to join the success story. Let's stay connected. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at Microgreens Consulting for exclusive content and expert tips and wisdom. If you found this episode insightful, please leave us a review, spread the word, and let's share Microgreens magic with the world. 
Until next time, let curiosity fuel your growth and may happiness be your harvest. Happy growing, everyone.